Hello everyone and welcome to the GeekNerder YouTube channel. In today's video, we are going to talk about stream processing concepts. If you have watched the first video in this series, we discussed what stream processing is and also compared it with batch processing. We also explored some techniques and challenges associated with stream processing. In this video, let's dive deeper and understand some of the very important concepts when it comes to stream processing. Before we do that, I would like to give a shout out to our sponsors for today. Rising Wave Labs, which is a Postgres compatible database purpose built to provide the simplest and most cost efficient approach for processing, analyzing and managing real time event streaming data. If you want to learn more, please feel free to join the Slack community. Here is the link for your reference. Now, let's get started. First, Let's talk about the notion of time. But why should we care about time? Before we do that, let's define an event. An event is something that occurs at a specific point in time. And without time, an event cannot exist. For example, user clicks a button on a website, user makes a payment. All of these actions happen at a given time. Now let's differentiate between two notions of time, event time and processing time. There's also ingestion time, but we'll skip that in this video. Event time. Event time refers to the time recorded at the source where the event is produced. It signifies the time when the event actually occurred. Processing is based on when the event happened and not when it was processed. This means an event can occur now, but be processed at a later time. Event time offers consistency across machines as it is embedded within the event itself. It ensures deterministic results regardless of the processing machine. So it doesn't matter where the event is processed on which machine, since the time is embedded within the event, it will always give you deterministic results. However, challenges such as out-of-orderness arise due to differences in event arrival latency. And we'll look at how we can handle that and, you know, provide better mechanism to handle out-of-orderness. Processing time, on the other hand, is the time on the processing machine the wall clock time on the particular machine executing the stream operation. This means that processing is based on when the event is processed rather than when it occurred. Processing time simplifies processing, eliminating concerns about late events because when the event is arrived, only then we produce that time. So there is no concept of late events. It also ensures low latency and optimal performance without the need for coordination across machines, keeping track of event time and, you know, moving the event time forward and so on. Now let's explore windowing, which is another very crucial concept in stream processing. Streams, as we know, are unbounded by nature. However, questions that are important for a business are based on time. Example, number of clicks a particular product category receives in a five minute window. This can be used to identify popular product categories in real time. Now windowing allows us to divide a continuous stream of data into finite chunks for analysis. Without windows, Performing calculations or summarizations on continuous data would be very challenging and also resource intensive. Now, there are several types of windows. First one, hopping window. This window type has a defined window size and a hop size. They are based on time intervals. They are actually fixed size possibly overlapping windows. 
because hopping windows can overlap, and usually they do, a record or an event can belong to more than one such window. Example, every 30 seconds, give me the average user clicks per product area over the last five minutes. This is a good example for hopping window. Now, let's understand what is a tumbling window. Basically, they are a special case of hopping windows because in this type, both the window size and the hop size are equal. With the window moving or tumbling in increments equal to the window size, they are based on time interval, they are fixed size, and more importantly, they are non-overlapping and gapless windows. As there is no overlap, an event will only be part of exactly one window. Let's take an example. Suppose we want to do analysis of user clicks on a product category that is received every hour. This helps identify peak shopping hours and how user interest varies throughout the day. Let's look at the third type of window, which is the sliding window. Similar to hopping windows, where the window slides over time or events, continuously counting and aggregating events within the window based on a slide interval, may totally depend on arrival of events and not the actual passing of time which means if there are no events or no new events, the window won't slide and a new window won't be created. There is overlap similar to hopping windows because the same event may occur in different windows. Example, a running average of user clicks every one minute over a window of five minutes. So sliding windows are really amazing or Sliding windows are really good for calculating running averages. Now let's look at another type of window, which is a session window. And this is, this type of window is used to track user session behavior. And it is defined not by time, but by the sequence of incoming events triggered by a user activity. So if there is no user activity, there won't be any event. As long as there is an activity, the window will keep growing. So this type of window can be used to calculate uh, user activity analysis on various sessions to find peak user hours for personalized marketing. Each window type serves different analytical needs, offering ways to manage and analyze data effectively. Depending on how you want to perform the streaming operations over a window, the type of window may play a significant role. For example, you can choose to avoid creating new windows if there are no new events. Or, for example, if you're okay with overlapping windows, you can use hopping windows. But if no overlap is tolerable, tumbling windows can be used. Different stream processing frameworks and platforms provide you easy way to perform these operations and their implementation may vary. For example, if you look at rising wave, you can create tumbling and hopping windows like this. It's a simple select query. You just have to provide tumble function and the interval. Similarly, for the hopping window, you have to provide the hop function and along with two intervals, the hop size and the window size. Let's take an example of another very popular stream processing framework, which is Apache Flink. And this is how you can create tumbling windows and sliding windows. Now let's discuss an important challenge when we decide to use event time. As we said, we can receive events in out of order because we use event time and not when it is processed. Now, events can come out of order in your stream processor, but why? Because even if they were produced in order, they may take separate path to arrive in the stream processor. For example, if the events end up in two separate partitions and one partition consumer is slower than the other partition, this is a very common case. So basically, 
even if the events are produced in order, they may arrive in the stream processor in a different order, which is a challenge because you have to then deal with out of orderness. So with events coming out of order, we have this challenge to solve. Basically, we need to keep track of passage of event time in the stream processor by looking at the events processed so far. How do I know that until a particular time I have received all the events or there is another event which is going to come? There's a technique that streaming databases like Rising Wave and stream processing frameworks like Apache Flink use. It's a very interesting and very powerful technique called watermarks. Let's understand briefly how they work. Now, there's a max event time, maximum timestamp observed in the events process so far. It reflects the highest point in event time that the system has seen so far. There's another very interesting property to understand, which is the allowed lateness. Now, how much time the system should wait for late events before closing a window. Now, watermark is a threshold that represents the progress of event time in the system. It represents the completeness of event data up to a certain point in event time. Because you don't have access to the event time clock. It's already happened. And you have to guess how much the event time has passed in your processor based on the event data you have received. Using these watermarks, stream processor can make progress and open new windows. If it cannot make a decision, it cannot close the existing window and create new one, which heavily impacts the processing. This is a bit of a challenge to implement in a distributed setup where events are coming in from multiple partitions and multiple stream processing nodes are processing them on different machines. And that is why Streaming databases like Rising Wave makes it very easy for you. Some frameworks like Kafka Streams do not have watermarks. Rather, they rely on continuous refinement, which means if there are late events out of order, they will just refine the results of that specific window where the event is supposed to be. With this, let's quickly recap what we have discussed in this video. We started off understanding what is the notion of time because it is very important. And we also understood why it is important when it comes to stream processing. We understood the nuances of choosing event time versus processing time. We looked at why windows are important and what are the different types of windows. And then we looked at how out of orderness is handled using watermarks. I hope you found this video informative. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and share this video with your network to spread knowledge about stream processing. Also do check out Rising Wave and join the Slack community. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.